We are nearing the end of another spring semester here at Penn State, which means it's been about a year since Dr. Neely Bendapudi took over as the 19th president of the university last May. And we are pleased that she's taken the time to join us this evening on Weather World. Welcome to the show, Neely. Thank you, John. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with you and with all of our viewers. Well, why don't we just start? How are you and your family, and if I understand correctly, four generations adjusting to life in central Pennsylvania? Hey, it's Happy Valley. What's not to like? Everybody is settling in very, very well. Um, you know, of course, the two-year-old grandson is the center of all of our attention, and he is getting closer to saying, we are Penn State. It's still Penn State, but one day the S will come in. Okay. So prior to coming to Penn State, you've been a faculty member. You have been a dean of a school of business. You've been a provost. You've been a vice chancellor, and most recently, before coming to Penn State, president of the University of Louisville. All these administrative perspectives, what are the most important lessons you can take from that, those experiences and apply here at Penn State? Um, that's a good way to put it because we all build on our experiences and we bring the fullness of our experiences to work. So I would say uh, some of the lessons I've learned are one, no one can do everything all by themselves. It's all about building a strong team. Secondly, I really do believe in the power of higher education to transform lives, which means even though we're within the university, we have to seek advice and support from people outside the university as well. And then, of course, I've learned that it's important to take joy in the fact that we create and disseminate knowledge every single day that improves people's lives. And you have a PhD in marketing. I've seen you call yourself a recovering banker. How do those perspectives inform the way you think about being a university president? Uh, as a business professor, I wanted to be a professor who didn't just teach from the theory, but knew what was happening in the world of business. So really, my entire academic career, I've made it a point to be part of business. But for about a three-year stint, I was executive vice president of a bank. And I think it's helped me learn that we need to be very good stewards of um, uh, the resources that are entrusted to us, whether it's from the state, whether it's from philanthropists, or of course, whether it's students' tuition. Right. So I hope that comes in handy because we are an $8.6 billion enterprise. So it's important to understand where we make our investments. Now you have visited uh, each Penn State campus as part of your introduction to the university. What was your biggest takeaway from those visits and what's the biggest challenge in the next few years in the campus system? I would say that the biggest learning from me is how critical these campuses are to the social, economic, cultural fabric of the communities they serve. And of course, I learned that if you see one campus, you've only seen one campus because they're all so unique and special and different. The biggest takeaway for me is that because 96%, 96% of Pennsylvanians live within 30 miles of one of our locations, we have a special obligation as a land-grant university. Programs such as this, right? right? Weather World that goes to every single Pennsylvanian. That is what I took away, that we have an outsized impact as a land-grant university, and we need to stay true to it. Um, we talk quite a bit about climate change in our department. I saw that the university recently set a goal of 100% reduction of greenhouse gases by the year 2035. What are the most important parts of the plan to reach that goal? And again, Penn State has had a long and storied commitment to this, so certainly this work began well before I came here. But what I did do is accept the recommendations of the task force. And uh, Laura Fowler, who is the um, uh, head of our Sustainability Institute, and a whole group of people are looking at these recommendations and saying, what would we do? I think it's important to us to realize that our students, this Monday I was with the Sustainability, Student Sustainability Advisory Council. If I got the name wrong, I apologize. Mm -hmm. But the ideas they came up with were profound, from the little things to the big things that would uh, change the university. And of course, Agriculture is our number one industry, and I want everyone to remember that no one cares more about sustainability than the people who put food on our table every single day. So how do we all work together is my big takeaway. Got it. And 
This is sort of a related question, but given that the environment is a focus on our show, what are your thoughts on other green initiatives at Penn State? Uh, I think it's wonderful. We all have to figure out, again, it comes back to what I said before, how are we going to be good stewards of the resources we've been given? So some of the initiatives from electric vehicles to the students were proposing something like, why do we need trays at the dining halls? Because many universities have done away with them. The idea is it reduces food waste, uh, it reduces the need for washing those trays, and of course you have to have them available for students who need it for access or other issues. But to me what is important is that it's not just one big magic thing we do, but looking at everything we decide, uh, the small choices we all make every single day. You've officially been pr uh, president now for about a year. What's caught your eye as, say, a hidden gem or two at the university that maybe doesn't get enough notice or attention? Every single day I discover something that surprises me. For example, mental health is very much on our minds. I had no idea that over 20 years ago, a couple of people at Penn State uh, had the foresight to start up the College Mental Health Consortium, where we actually collect data from about 750, I think, uh, colleges and universities across the country and the world. And we try to use that data to help people. So that's the latest. Okay. Dr. Neely Bendapudi, 19th president of Penn State, thanks so much for joining us on Weatherworld. Thank you so much. It's truly an honor to be here with you. And we will be back in a moment with a recap of the forecast.